Pleased to present to you today uh, an audit from Northumbria Healthcare Trust called A Great Cocktail Without Hangover, specifically looking at hip blocks and proximal femoral fractures, uh, narrated today by Will Harrison and Debbie Lees. So the purpose of this audit was twofold. First of all, to look at the implementation of a new procedure into the trust and to document the compliance and the adverse drug reactions within uh, in the introduction of the procedure. The second part was also to look at how the actual uh, procedure impacted in terms of pain score for patients with hip fractures. So what we were looking at was two, two distinct components. First of all, a preoperative fascia iliaca block, and this provides pain relief uh, directly to the hip when the patient has hurt it. The second part is a postoperative uh, analgesia, and this is an indwelling catheter with local anaesthetic, which is uh, given directly into the hip postoperatively. The standards that we set ourselves, first of all, all patients should receive the block within four hours of being admitted to the hospital. All blocks should be documented and prescribed by the clinician performing the block. Pain scores should be routinely monitored and actioned. All patients should be considered for an enhanced recovery pathway. And lastly, reasons for not performing the enhanced recovery pathway should be documented. The background uh, to this project, pain relief is an important part of the hospital experience, uh, particularly patients with uh, hip fractures. The NICE guidelines and the British uh, Orthopaedic Association have brought out guidance in 2011, which specifically recommend the use of a local anaesthetic block uh, alongside uh, more traditional uh, pain relief for, for these patients. So the overview of this project, first of all, uh, we've performed three uh, cycles over a two and a half year period. We've also retrospectively looked at a group of patients that were treated before we uh, started using either the block or the enhanced recovery to act as a baseline to compare our data with. What we're presenting here today is the uh, three cycles that we've performed. Patients with hip fractures are very important because they often uh, have lots of medical comorbidities, often in social isolation, and they may also have difficulties mobilising and are very frail. Opiates are the traditional uh, mainstay of pain relief for these patients. Uh, however, with all the good that comes with the pain relief from opiates, there's also a lot of detrimental effects, particularly those uh, patients with um, uh, renal impairment that can impact on uh, respiratory depression and cause uh, pneumonia, also causes confusion, nausea and vomiting. So our group of patients, uh, this was from two separate sites. Uh, one of them is Wandsbeck General Hospital, the other is North Tyneside General Hospital. And between the, all three cycles, we've collected 434 patients. The predominance is females, that's seen in uh, most literature as well. And the mean age is around 84 years old. Patients typically stayed about 13 days. So with these types of numbers of patients and the duration of hospital stay, it's a, obviously a big impact on our services. The first category that we looked at was from cycle one in Wandsbeck Hospital, whether the block was actually given or not. And we found at this stage, although we had a good compliance of 62.5%, there was a large proportion of people who were not receiving this initial first treatment. When we then looked at cycles comparing Wandsbeck and North Tyneside, we found that we had a much better uptake in terms of 92% at Wandsbeck and 88% at North Tyneside once we had once we had implemented um, this particular procedure and we had educated A&E as well as educated our junior doctors on how to perform the procedure. In terms of why these were not given, the predominant cause was that the registrar who was in charge of the A&E shift at that time had not been trained or the orthopaedic registrar responding to first calls also had not received adequate training. Other causes were that the patient refused, um, A&E junior staff weren't trained, equipment wasn't available, the patient refused for various reasons, or the patient was comfortable, or we had no evidence in the terms of the documentation. So when we looked at the first cycle, 50% of the reasons were not documented, 
um, a large proportion not trained and equipment not available was 19%. But this was an improvement in the second cycle of 48.8% in terms of not trained. And equipment aren't available had increased to 14.2%. And we took this to mean that the demand for this procedure had outstripped the, the, the supply of the equipment that we had available. There was also a, a small portion of patients who had not been identified as requiring a fascia eyelacquer block as they were based on other wards when they'd suffered their injury and were a ward to ward transfer instead of admission from A&E. When we look at the preoperative pain scores in cycle one, when we look at the fascia eyelacquer block given versus no fascia eyelacquer block, we see that there's a distinct difference in pain scores between the two groups. On admission, the pain scores were high. We've then marked at the point of fascia eyelacquer block um, that we've had a, a slight decrease, and this was generally often to pre-admission analgesia, and then we have a dramatic decrease in the pain scores thereafter once the fascia eyelaca block had been given. This effect was then continued on through and certainly documented to be effective for up to 20 hours post-block. In cycle two, the same trend continued, and again, we had a very good statistical significance at this stage. Cycle three, again, the same trend followed, although it was a little more turbulent in terms of the actual relief documented and we feel that this is developing more of a realistic trend in terms of how people respond to the analgesia. When we then looked separately at the number of opiates or the amount of opiates that was used during this time, again it became very clear that the group that had not received the fascia eyelacquer block had a much higher requirement of opiates and this was again consistent throughout the preoperative 24-hour period. If we look now at the slide that looks at the fast track, you can see the equipment that we use for this. This is a procedure that is done towards the end of the operation, just before we close the wound. We put an indwelling catheter directly into the wound and attach this to a bolus of local anesthetic that continues to infiltrate into the wound in the post-operative period. When we compared the full fast track protocol, which consisted of intraoperative local anesthetic injections plus the indwelling catheter, um, when we compared that to patients who had the local anesthetic infiltration only intraoperatively but did not have the catheter, we can see from the graph that the local anesthetic had higher pain scores. And this was brought on and most noticeable, particularly from the six hour postoperative period, but this reduced again around about the 13 to 14 hour postoperative period. The reasons why patients did not receive the full enhanced recovery fast track protocol wasn't documented in 65%. Um, and for the rest, there was a, a combination of concerns with regards to the renal impairment status, as well as the fact that the anaesthetist may have chosen to give them a femoral nerve block as part of their anaesthetic. Outcome in cycle one was that initially that the fascia eyelacquer block was done by the surgical practitioner or the author registrar on call, but A&E very quickly came to the party and started embracing the technique. Documentation requirements were lacking initially, so we've developed a bespoke medication chart for all our neck of femur fracture patients, as well as the prescription for the local anaesthetic for the block printed directly onto the cardex. We've modified the admissions document, and we've also modified the perioperative document as well, so the correct documentations can take place as well. We noticed a, a distinct improvement um, following cycle one, as soon as we've got this cardex into, into play, as well as the staff training as people became more au fait with the procedure. In cycle two, our audit was expanded across two separate sites, and we also started to look at opiate usage for the cycle. We developed a custom database and this allows easier data collection across multiple sites. Other sites have also expressed interest both within and outside the trust. We have a separate audit also currently being performed by the anaesthetic department looking into the knowledge levels of those performing the blocks. Since our initial presentation we've managed to complete cycle three showing a clear demonstration of institutional learning of the technique despite rotaring doctors and we also have demonstrated a, a statistically significant effect in terms of pain relief and morphine reduction. The strengths of the project is that we've demonstrated a greater than 90% delivery of the fasciaca blocks from a, a baseline of uh, a new procedure being introduced into the trust. We've also improved in our documentation within patients' notes, and we can see that pain scores are being actioned both in A&E and also on the wards. We've brought out specific cardex and medication chart with a pre-printed analgesia and antiemetics for this uh, special group of patients. The challenges that we've faced, uh, first of all, we mustn't forget the patients on the wards who, who break, their, break their hips um, uh, and aren't coming through the normal stream 
of uh, admissions through A&E. It's also important for us to document the pre and post block pain score, um, which was often poorly documented when we looked through the notes. Pain scoring for demented patients is a real challenge and uh, there are special tools that can be utilised by clinicians and nursing staff. Uh, however, these need to be developed into our audit project in the future. Adequate analgesia for demented patients is also a challenge, but this can be uh, looked at again by pain scoring me uh, methods. Thank you very much.